Everyone, remain calm. Yeah. Ooh. Ah. That's how it always starts. But then later, there's running and screaming. Somebody talk to me. What is happening? Welcome to Jurassic World. You're listening to the Jurassic Park podcast. You want to consult here or in my bungalow? <laughs> Hold on to your butt. Well, we're back. Hello, and welcome to the 37th episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Jost, and we're here to discuss all things Jurassic Park. In this episode, we're going to focus on the listeners. Now, I've put off the emails and voicemails over the past few weeks, so it's about time we got caught up. I also have an audio clip from Mercedes for you to hear, and a tribute to John Williams. So, I'm going to skip over the news this week, as it really wasn't too much to report anyway, but I did want to report that I did get a chance to see the Jurassic World VR. You know, the one with the original Jeep and the Apatosaurus. I gotta say, it's so awesome to really be immersed in that environment, in that that forest where you see the Apatosaurus and the Jeep. Um, And you get to see that Apatosaurus up close and personal. And it really brought me back to the wonder of that initial Brachiosaurus scene from Jurassic Park. You know, you get that awe and that sense of wonder, seeing it jump up and and grab from the trees. You get that same feeling when you're watching this Apatosaurus up close. Um, Now, I was discussing this with Sickleclaw on Twitter, and I think we decided that it would have been really, like a really, really nice touch to have this added to the film. Uh, But, you know, oh well, the VR experience is all we have, and it's awesome, and I highly suggest you go check it out. This episode is debuting the week of February 8th, 2016. So make sure to tune into AMC Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night for a three-night marathon of the original three Jurassic Park films. Finally, they are showing the Lost World. I'll be watching, will you? So why don't we start things off with some audio from around the Jurassic World. Oh, hear fire, do not fire! God creates a man. Man destroys God. Man creates dinosaurs. Boy, we can't be right all the time. We're gonna have to drop the can! Are you ready? One, two, come on! This week I have a fun clip for you. Uh, This was grabbed from the recent Mercedes-Benz Museum Monday episode. In this clip, you'll hear Yuke talk about the Mercedes SUV from The Lost World and the Unimog from Jurassic World. Take a listen. This guy behind me is almost as big of a star as I am in Germany. He played the leading role in a film by a very famous director, which um, was called... um, It is called the ML320. Jeff Goldblum, one of the actors, bought himself a doppelganger of it. Oh, it's you, the Unimog. The T-Rex of Mercedes-Benz. Some call it the T-Benz or the Mercedes-Rex. Check out these tires. They are massive. Because of those beauties, they wanted this car in, you know, that movie. You can adjust the tire pressure by the push of a button. So that makes it the perfect car to get away from anything. You know, zombies, pirates, dinosaurs. Just like the filmmakers and con men. So as you can tell, there's a bit of comedy infused into this video. It's so cool to hear people still talking about how awesome that Mercedes SUV was in the Lost World. I, for one, absolutely love that vehicle. Um, So if you do, if you love this one and the one from Jurassic World, make sure to go check out this video within the link in our show notes. Monday the 8th of February marks John Williams' 84th birthday. So, of course, I wanted to play a tribute to some of the other amazing works that John has created for what you could say is a few other iconic film series. Enjoy. Thank you. 
John Williams has created some of the most iconic film scores of all time. So let's wish the maestro a happy 84th birthday. I was recently on an episode of the Jurassic Unicast podcast. Make sure to check out that interview with James and Steve through their channel on YouTube. Just search for Jurassic Unicast and subscribe. And welcome back to Jurassic Unicast. I am James, one of your hosts, and I'm joined with... Stephen Harrell. And we've got a special guest today. Say hello, Brad. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> du, 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 du. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all adventurous. Definitely, 100%. Because I'd love to just go down Main Street tramping on everything. It's just, <laughs> it's just one of them sort of games you just get a thrill out of just destroying stuff. Oh, yeah. But like we could sit there for four hours and watch a film. You know what I mean? How oh, easily. Do a Jurassic yeah. World Hardcore Fans Edition. Who would you feel is the best characters out of the whole franchise? I got to pick. Malcolm be the best character. Good. Yeah, it's you just, think, it's, you un- think it's gonna go mainland then? I think so, yeah. I think yeah. it's just gonna be unrestricted dinosaurs. But I'd love to see like a pride of lions um, defend a territory against a pack of raptors. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, amazing. Thanks for coming on, Brad. It's been a pleasure, mate. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for having me on. Make sure to follow them on Twitter at JP underscore till underscore I underscore die. I'm not a computer nerd. I prefer to be called a hacker. Aren't you supposed to be a genius or something? I can't get Jurassic Park back online without Dennis Dendron. Incorporating all the latest technologies. We shouldn't be here. 
And there's five dinosaurs. How many Sarahs do you think are on this island? So as I said in our intro this week, I wanted to give you, the listeners, the spotlight and feature some of our recent emails and voicemails that I've received. I haven't gotten the opportunity to read or play some of them recently, so I decided on this full episode to showcase them all. We'll probably end up doing episodes like this from time to time just to catch up, so make sure to send in your questions and comments. Let's get into this first email here. This one is from Zachary Carlisle. He says, What's going on? My question is about the original cast. Do you think it would be good or a bad idea to bring back the original cast? I think it might be cool to bring back the original three and the kids. Thoughts? Thanks, man. Not so much going on here. Just patiently waiting for Jurassic World sequel news. Um, Now, I think it would be awesome to bring back the original cast. They did a great job integrating Dr. Henry Wu into Jurassic World, really without overdoing it. Um, He felt like, uh, to me, he felt like a continuation of that small character that we saw in Jurassic Park. Um, But I think if they were to bring back any of the characters, they'd have to be very careful with the reasons that they're bringing them back. Um, Basically, all of them would have, uh, I can't really think of any, so literally no reason to head back to the island. And I don't know, I can't really see Claire or Owen reaching out to them for any kind of, you know, expert help of any sort. Um, So I I think it would be a good idea to bring them back. But you just have to make sure to do it right. Otherwise, it could become a a bad idea really quick. Um, And I'm wondering, it makes me think of like Star Wars and what they did with Han Solo and Leia and Chewie and, you know, all the others. I I, I wonder if that nostalgia will be enough to bring out even more crowds. And and I could definitely see them doing something like this in the sequel. Um, And it definitely could benefit, I think. You know, it's hard to benefit on 1.6 billion. But... I think bringing back some of the old cast would definitely help get some of the the older crowd involved. Um, So anyway, thanks, man, for the question. And I have a feeling that we'll be hearing from you uh, with a voicemail pretty soon. This next one comes from listener Nick, who always interacts with us. And he says, Greetings, it's Nick, a.k.a. Klingon007JP on Instagram. Why was there only one chopper on the entire island? Wouldn't it have been smarter to have at least a dozen helicopters rather than just JW001? I found that to be a bit odd. I mean, yes, there would be dozens of people going to the island by boat, since it would take forever to get them all there by chopper. But I was just beginning to think it would be smarter to have more than one helicopter, especially what becomes of it when it gets attacked in the aviary. Now, I know there was only one chopper in the original park, but it wasn't exactly open to the public yet, and things were still getting in place. This is just a little something that irked me. Hey, Nick, this is a very good point that you bring up. Um, As far as we can tell from what we see in the film, there's only one chopper, like you said, JW001. Uh, Now, this is the chopper that we see Mizrani flying around, and if you haven't seen Jurassic World, spoiler warning, he crashes it. Um, So, there is a bit of other info that I found within the film that proves that there may be more than one. It's possible. Um, If you know, when Claire is driving around in the Unimog towards the end after they're being chased by the raptors, uh, she calls Lowry and says, Lowry, we're headed your way calling a chopper. I think we should assume that since Mizrani had already crashed JW001, that there must be another one. Unless she means just call a random chopper from mainland Costa Rica. Uh, that's a possibility, I guess. Um, I did do a little digging on the website. You can see that they have different packages for experiences on the island. Uh, one of the experiences is called the Apex Predator Package. Uh, which has an image of JW001 as an island tour vehicle. So I guess you can purchase this package and get the best experience by traveling over the island viewing the dinosaurs. So does this mean that JW001 is an all-purpose helicopter on the island for tours and Mizrani's personal transportation? I don't know. I highly doubt that it's the only one. But thanks for the intriguing email, Nick. Uh, Hopefully we can get to the answer sometime soon. I have two voicemails here from Locust Sniper on Twitter. Let's take a listen to the first one. Hey, Brad. This is Locust Sniper at Justice Still on Twitter. I just first uh, thank you so much for including me in your last episode. I really enjoyed it, man, and thank you for answering my question. You answered it perfectly. So just want to first off thank you for that. And uh, I'm back this week again, and my question, in a sense, is kind of two questions in one. Uh, I don't know if you got my post that I retweeted to you last week, I believe. It dealt with uh, the rumor that 
Spinosaurus and T-Rex could possibly be fighting again in Jurassic World 2 sequel because uh, there was a guy, I believe his name was Joseph on Twitter, he messaged Colin Trevorrow and asked about would they consider doing the JP3 rematch between Spino and you know Big Mama T-Rex and he said something to the lines of duly noted my friend or something like that which kind of gave a little bit of a hint maybe they're considering doing that for Jurassic World 2 and my question to you is do you think that it's possible that there could be a Jurassic Park 3 rematch between Spinosaurus and Big Mama T-Rex from Jurassic Park and do you think also that the Indominus Rex will return from Jurassic World because we see that the Mama T-Rex, she survived, and Blue's alive. Of course, the Mosasaur is alive. And though it showed the Indominus getting grabbed by the Mosasaur, we don't necessarily know if the Mosasaur killed the Indominus or what happened. So my question to you is, number one, do you think that there will be a, a Jurassic Park trigger match between Spinosaurus and T-Rex? And do you think that the Indominus may make a reappearance on Jurassic World 2? Thank you again. You have a wonderful day. Thanks, man, for the voicemail. Sorry it took so long to get it on here. Um, as I said before, I've been compiling them over the past few weeks. Um, now, I may have shortly discussed it on a previous episode, but I really don't think that the rematch between the Rex and the Spino will happen. Honestly, I, I hope there's no more big battles between our top competitors. Um, now, at the same time, I really did appreciate the battle in Jurassic World. I thought it was an epic moment in the series and a great culmination to the film. Um, but overall, I really hope we don't get any of those, any more of those battles. Um, I think it's a possibility that Colin could consider it, but ultimately I think he was joking with that comment that he did on Twitter. I think that he sees so many suggestions for the sequels through the internet, um, and I believe I heard him, or I saw him say it one time on Twitter that he just can't use any of them, especially not the bad ones, thank God. Uh, but as far as the Indominus goes, I really think that's the end of her. Um, we didn't see her breathe her last breath, but I cannot imagine that she'd survive that mauling that she took from the Mosasaur, let alone the drowning. But who knows? Maybe through the cuttlefish genes, she inherited a pair of gills. Um, I don't believe that at all, but who knows? We don't exactly know what kind of dinosaur they cooked up in that lab. Oh, well, he also sent in another voicemail, so let's check out that one. Hey, Brad. This is Lucas Sniper, or at Justice Steel from Twitter. And I want to go ahead and apologize ahead of time that I haven't done this message earlier. But, um, I got sidetracked this past week, and a lot of things have hit me all at once in my schedule, and I just didn't have any time to do the voicemail, so I do want to apologize at first. I also apologize for the noise in the background. I hope that doesn't mess with the voice now too much. But my question for you today is, what do you think is going to take place in Jurassic World 2? Now, there's I'm, I don't know if you know it or not, but there's been a lot of, I guess you could say, fan posters going around. Like, I've seen one. It was called, I believe, The Lost Park Jurassic World, which to me looked very cool. And they had the idea of bringing back Sam Neill, Laura Dern, uh, Jeff Goldblum, and Julianne Moore. Which, I think that sounds cool, but it would be, it would seem like it's replicating the original trilogy. So I don't know how that would go. And then there's another one, which is kind of weird to me, but it's called Jurassic War, War, I believe is how it's pronounced, Jurassic War. And it has a poster with a T-Rex on it that has like machine gun, machine guns loaded on him and like turrets and flamethrowers and stuff all on the T-Rex. Though the poster's kind of cool, I just, I don't know how fans will react to that. But you you could probably check them out for yourself. They, sh they should be on Google or something like that. But that's my question for you today. What do you think will take place in Jurassic World 2? What will the story be? and where they're going to go with it. All right, thank you, and you have a blessed day. Bye. Thanks again, man. I certainly plan on having a bunch of podcasts in the future about what we think will happen in Jurassic World 2, um, and I really do love all the fan posters that have been created, and they certainly spark some interesting debate as to what we may see in the sequels. Um, but I guess my thoughts to sum up the sequel 
Um, I really think that there should be some sort of judgment for all those involved in the decision making during the events at Jurassic World. Um, I'm hoping to see sort of, you know, not fully, but sort of like a courtroom drama at the beginning of the film. Um, so, you know, somebody's got to pay for what happened. And as the film progresses, I hope we see the creation of, fil- of um, companies like Biosyn, and the Grendel Corporation, and others that begin to create their own dinosaurs, eventually, in my eyes, causing the downfall of society in those certain parts of the world that those companies are created. Um, I want to see the dinosaurs living together in Africa with like lions and everything and all the other animals just battling over who is higher on the food chain. And I actually do imagine that we'll see portions of the original Jurassic 4 script come to life on the screen. I have a feeling that they'll try to rope Owen back into training a pack of dinosaurs. And if they do, I assume he'd want Blue back on the team. Which means that he'll ha- they'll have to send Owen back to Nublar to track her down. Which I personally would love to see that island again. Maybe just for a short period of time. Um, And I I just hope we get a glimpse of Jurassic World now overgrown and decayed, uh, just like it was in the old park in Jurassic World. Um, In my version of this sequel, um, Owen finds Blue, brings her back into the fold with a newer set of raptors, uh, maybe some that are, are even more fierce than the ones we just saw, and I can see that creating a problem where they don't exactly get along with Blue. Um, So I really don't know what the MacGuffin will be for the film, but I can see all these things happening, combining for an awesome film, hopefully. You know, if you have a great idea, call back in sometime, let me know what you think will happen in the sequels. And really, that goes for everybody else. I'd love to hear all your thoughts. This voicemail is from Zachary, who we heard from earlier in an email. Hey, man, this is Zachary Carlisle. You can find me on Twitter at at saltygray 15 I was just wanting to know, do you happen to know who has the rights to Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World in in the world of comics? I'd like to sit down maybe and chit chat with you sometime about a pitch I would have for a graphic novel. I hope you're having a good day and love the podcast. Peace out, brother. Thanks for another great submission, man. I tried to look into your question. Um, Didn't come up with a complete confirmation. Uh, Last we saw, the rights were with IDW Comics. They did the Redemption, Devils in the Desert, and uh, Dangerous Games series from 2010 to 2012. Uh, The recent string of comics were not very well received, um, so many are hoping that the license has gone away from IDW, but we don't exactly know where it is at the moment. I I don't, at least. Um, I actually do enjoy a lot of the stuff that IDW does put out, so maybe we could just chalk it up to bad direction at the time of those comics. You know, they didn't have basically the story group who created Jurassic World, so hopefully now they can focus in. Um, But I really really hope we get something like that sometime soon, whether a prequel or something before the second movie here that we have coming. Um, Now, I believe we did talk about this earlier uh, through Twitter. I I believe you mentioned the ACU graphic novel, Um, and I absolutely hope that's something that we do get to see sometime. That would be the perfect circumstance for a graphic novel or comic Um, and I'd love to hear more of your ideas on this topic so hopefully we get a chance to talk about them sometime soon. I really think the comics could tell so many different stories within this Jurassic Park universe so I'm really hoping. Thanks Zachary. This next one comes from Sickle Claw so let's take a listen. Hello uh, this is Sickle Claw from Jurassic Park Legacy. I am calling about the upcoming release of uh, Jurassic World hybrid toy line and they may have already made use in the fandom the the hybrid T-Rex already came out uh, in stores and a lot of people already seen it but in um, in a few weeks actually starting on the 13th to the 16th um, pictures will come out from Toy Fair where the hybrid um, Toy line will be displayed, and I just want to like talk about how I look forward to a lot of the new sculpts that will come out then, and also I just hope that Hasbro has really taken a chance with the new sculpts and has not really continued with um, how they are with this, uh, uh, um, the line so far, because from what I understand, the hybrid T-Rex. It still has the screw holes that um, 
the regular Jurassic World line has. So I just hope that they have improved the rest of the line and this is just a placeholder. And I also admit I was disappointed that um, it still had the screw holes, but um, I'm still glad they were getting additional mer merchandise. And then I know by the time this uh, episode is edited, the Toy Fair will already be on and everybody will have already seen the merchandise that I'm talking about. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how it looks like it when, it, when we finally see the picture, then we get to discuss it. And that'll be a really exciting time for the fandom, I believe. Alright, thank you um, for your time, and I just wanted to give you my two cents on what I think, hope for the toy line that the quality control would improve a bit as well. All right, bye. Thanks, man, so much for the voicemail. It's always great to hear from you. We talk all the time on Twitter, so interact with him if you get the chance. Um, as far as the new hybrid line goes, uh, me, like many other people, I'm scared. Now, like you said, people have seen it, and we have heard some outright hatred and also some growing love for the figure, which is strange. I didn't expect to see that. You know, those screw holes do really bother me, though. Um, I have the Stomp and Strike Rex, and I think those holes are pretty distracting. And to me, it's basically an unforgivable screw-up. Pun fully intended, obviously. Um, now I can't wait for that Toy Fair. Uh, hopefully we get a chance to see the other sculpts, and like you, I'm praying that they look better than the initial Jurassic World line. Um, I'm really hoping to get a glimpse of that Dilophosaurus Rex. Uh, that's what I'm most looking forward to from this line. And I'm sure we'll be talking a lot more about them in the next episode. So thanks again for the voicemail, and I'll definitely talk to you soon. Now, we got another voicemail here from a new listener, and here it is. Uh, hi. Uh, first time listener, just started listening last night. I was, I was curious. This year marks the fifth anniversary of the Telltale Jurassic Park game, and I think that fans don't really talk about it that much. I mean, I, for one, think it's very underrated, and I adore it, so I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts about it. Uh, so thanks. Um, have a nice day. Hey there, new listener. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen and call in. Now, it's always great to hear from listeners, especially first-timers. Um, anyway, I'm right here with you on Telltale's Jurassic Park game. I had a blast playing through it and actually did enjoy the story. Um, I have been thinking of actually playing through it again, so maybe your voicemail was the push that I needed. Um, from what I remember, I remember it connecting well with the first film and tying into parts of other films, but I also do remember that it kind of ruins the continuity between um, the game and Jurassic World. Um, now, the game isn't considered canon with the films, but I do kind of like to tie them in together, uh, maybe take some things here, take some things there, because it is fun to think of some of these events actually happening around the initial film. Uh, maybe once I play through it again, I'll be able to talk a little bit more in depth about it, but uh, yeah, I think the game deserves so much more recognition and less hate than it's, than it's always given for some reason. Uh, just because it isn't the type of game that people were expecting doesn't mean it's a bad thing. If any of you have played Telltale games, you know exactly what type of game to expect. Point and clicks, it's basically a story, there's a lot of choices for you to make, but not a ton of gameplay. And I think every Jurassic Park fan needs to play through this game with that in mind. Uh, but anyway, thanks again for calling in, and I hope to hear from you sometime soon. I had the chance to sit down with Sabrina and Garrett from I Know Dino, the big dinosaur podcast, for episode 60 of their podcast. We talked all about dinosaurs in the media from 2015. Welcome to I Know Dino, the big dinosaur podcast, where we cover news, interviews, and discussions of all things dinosaur. Hello and welcome to I Know Dino. I'm Garrett. And I'm Sabrina. We have an interview with Brad Jost from the Jurassic Park podcast. Yeah, you can especially tell when everyone tries to work Jurassic into the name of their thing. <laughs> Why are you using Jurassic rather than Cretaceous or Triassic? But I think one of the, the entire mess-ups that they had with Jurassic World was 
you know, not projecting how big it was going to be, even for their theme parks. Yeah, the, we had um, one of those guys in a dinosaur suit at our wedding, too, actually. <laughs> it, uh, oh, well, really? It was supposed to be a juvenile T-Rex, I think, so it was a little bit bigger than... His name was Duncan, and they put a lot of time and effort into building this animatronic head for him. And I think, yeah. actually, I like Jurassic World a little bit better than I like the good dinosaur. Make sure to listen via iTunes, check out their website, inodino.com, and follow them on Twitter, at inodino. Thanks for listening to the 37th episode of the Jurassic Park Podcast. Of course, I need to thank all of you this week who submitted voicemails and emails. The very point of this podcast is to create an open forum for everybody in the community to discuss the world of Jurassic Park. Of course, I invite you each and every week to send in your voicemails and emails, so make sure to keep them coming in. And don't forget to help us out with the name for our new freeform discussion segment. So far, we've gotten a bunch of great choices, and if you have a concept or a name for the segment, send it in and we'll make sure to give you the spotlight. And you've probably heard in the past few episodes, but I have two videos from my visit to Islands of Adventure this past December that I've posted over on our YouTube page. So make sure to watch them both. The first one is a ride through the Jurassic Park River Adventure, and the second is the Raptor Encounter. Please go watch them. Make sure to give them a huge thumbs up and share them with all your friends. If you want to interact with us, we do most of our work over on Twitter, at Jurassic Park Pod, or Facebook at facebook.com slash Jurassic Park Podcast. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram. We are at Jurassic Park Podcast. You can listen to us via iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Podomatic, and YouTube, or wherever else podcasts are found. So make sure to subscribe so you automatically get the new episodes each and every week. If you haven't already, please give us a five-star review in iTunes. It will seriously help our rankings and make it easier for fans like you to find us. Of course, we're usually spotted commenting on the Jurassic Park subreddit as Jurassic Park Podcast. And if you want to get a hold of us, you can email us with any news stories, MP3s, segment ideas, pictures, top tens, or comments to JurassicParkPod at gmail.com. If you would like to record something for the show, Send it in to us and we'll feature it in an upcoming episode. If you don't have any way to record, you can give our voicemail a call like many did this episode and leave us a message. That number is 732-825-7763. Thanks for listening and enjoy. Five minutes. Drop what you're doing and leave now. Wow, looks like we're, uh, we're moving on up, moving on up. to the east moving side, to a deluxe apartment in the sky. We're moving on up, moving on up. to the east side. We're finally getting up real high. You and the bird, we got a real good view. Jeez Louise, you ever see so many shoes? We're still a moving on up. To the wait, wait a minute. Is that George and Wheezy? Who else would it be? Uh-huh. And what are you cooking there, Wheeze? Just flame boiling some burgers. And grilling some beans, my good man. Did you say beans? Beans on 